How, what's been your first impression in Nebraska? I've been blown away. I've been blown. You know, in this, in this world, like I took the job at Baylor, like I show up, there's a camera in my face and it's like, this is Baylor. Oh, okay. Pretty cool. Like, um, get to Carolina. Oh, this is Carolina. Like I actually, I actually got to go out and check out Lincoln. And I really thought like, I thought it was going to be like this small little town, like Stillwater, Oklahoma or something. I got there and the downtown, the Haymarket, the, the, the campus community, like I've been blown away. I had no idea though. I mean, I'm in Mexico. I'm at wherever I am. Someone comes up, go big red. Like just the Here's reach. Are really yeah, like the reach. Red. The reach is unreal. I really like that. No doubt. I went to, uh, we were in Arizona and I literally had to go to like a bank to sign like a document for a loan. And I just brought Will with me because we we're going somewhere right after. And the guy was like at first excited to meet me and then saw Will and moved him out of the way just to say go big red. And it was the Will Compton show for the next 25 minutes. I love it. Got me a couple percentages down on that interest rate. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, got you, that. brother. That's my fucking Dude, boy right there. everywhere, bro. The Nebraska fan base is like second to none. Yeah, it sounds like a obviously, gang. I'll, I'll, obviously, I'm biased, yeah. but I do think Nebraska's fan base is second to none out there. No, I, uh, that that much I've seen. and um, But I just, I like the place, you know I mean? And I, you know, you need to take over a new team. You never know what they're going to be like. Not, this is a really good group of guys too. Like they, they want to win. And I look back at this season, you know, they, it could have gone any which way. You guys have been on teams where, you know, things don't go the way you want them. Mm -hmm. They battled, you know, and to beat Iowa at the end of the year, they showed some grit and some toughness. And there's a lot of guys there that really, really love Nebraska. So I'm anxious to get started for them and do the best I can for them. What do you feel like did it for you? Like if you take out the, the fluff of saying like all the right things, like you got um, leaving Carolina. Getting fired in Carolina. Getting fired in Carolina. Was, yeah, keep it yeah. real. That's you know fair. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Because like, it's good. Because I'm I, sitting there, I'm like, should I say, got fired oh, from got Carolina? Fired, that was, hey, that's, you've opened up a whole lot of doors for us no, in this interview. No, I mean, I got fired. Like, it is what it is. Like, yeah. especially in that league. Man, it's been so, I'll say this. It's been so good for me when I'm talking, I'm talking to recruits. And I'm even talking to the guys in this team. They're like, coach, I've been through this. Or, you know, I just transferred because of this. I'm like, bro, I was, just, I, same thing. Same thing just happened to me that's happening to you. Like, you know, so often as a coach, like the coach and then the player, like, like to me, I feel like I'm on the same level with them because I just went through, I went through elite adversity. Not many head coaches go through adversity because once you get fired, you're usually out of it. I was just able to get fired and then two months later, find a job that fit me. Um, so like, I feel like I'm on a whole, I'm, I'm so much better for having been through it. Not, not having the chance to coach in the NFL, that was really cool, but to get fired and to be made fun of and to be a meme and all that stuff, like that, that either breaks you or turns you into something like supernatural. Like I'm not saying I'm supernatural, but I'm, I'm, but I'm working hard to get there. Supernatural you know what I'm like, right now. It fires me up. So it's just, it's been really good for me um, to go through that. When you say elite adversity and people would sit back and in the comments or anything else, talk about relate to, okay, I'm sure it's real tough going through that adversity with a buyout that you have. A lot of coaches, when they get fired, they get bought out. Scott Frost, literally everybody. Mm -hmm. When Bo got fired, but big buyout. There's big buyouts for coaches when they get fired. Explain the adversity you're talking about a little bit more because a lot of a lot of people do. It's like you do get fired, but there is a nice bag still yeah. sitting there for you no when doubt. that does happen. No doubt. I just mean more like... Yeah, it, you know, it's 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 the money's the money, right? And the money's ridiculous. Shouldn't shouldn't be this much money to coach, but it the market's the market, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no, right? Right. Um, I just think it's you know it, it's your kids, it's your family. Like, uh, you know, people have a tendency. You know, I think we all kind of look at athletes as like even me as a coach. Like, you look at athletes as you know just this entity. They're, you guys are people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're people. Um, you look at coaches and you see them as like this person, we're just going to criticize, but there were people. Right. And so like, for me, like walking out of a stadium and put my arm around my son and, you know, they just had 50,000 people chanting for his dad to get fired. Like that ain't fun. Mm -hmm. They had every right to do it. I got no issue with it. You try to teach lessons, but like you go through all that, your, your daughters come home and she's like, we have to move again. Like that's real. And I'll never forget um, Brad Childress. He has no coach. Childress was at Vikings. He, he called mm -hmm. me, he texted me. He didn't even, I don't even know him. Yeah, he said, Matt, you'll be so much better of a coach for having gone through this because you know part of my job I have to fire coaches. I have to I've had to fire players. Yeah, I've had to cut players. And um, when you go through it and you see what it feels like, the empathy, the how public it is, I just think it's that part of the, probably the public part of it. Where like you walk into the grocery store afterwards and people look like you, like you're a dead man walking. And it's like they didn't kill me. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I'm still here. I'm still alive. <laughs> so that part maybe just as a dad is hard. But no, to your point, you make great money. It's all part of it. Like, this is the life I've chosen. It's like the mafia. Like, I chose to be a coach, the highs and lows of it. But you go through some – the adversity is pretty tough for, for your kids when, you know, you're sitting there like, oh, I hope they're not reading this. I hope they're not reading that. You, usually they are. So. How old are your kids? 
I have an 18 year old son. Yeah, oh, he's nine definitely is, seen Oh, yeah, he's, he's definitely seen everything. Seen, yeah. he's and one day he came in, he's like, he's like, no. Dad, Dad, Stephen A. Smith is going in on you. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, all right, no. well, it is what it is, buddy. But but I have nine and seven year old daughters, and they're the ones I, you know, my son kind of knows it. My, my daughters, I kind of, when my son was, I don't know, maybe nine or 10, I was coaching at Temple. I was an assistant coach at the time, and Andy Reid um, was kind of coming to the end in Philly. We went to a game. And the Patriots got up on the Eagles, and the whole crowd started chanting, fire, Andy. And so my son's sitting there, he's eight or nine, he's going, fire. I'm like, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> So when they started chanting to fire me, I'm like, pretty good company, buddy. Andy Reid's the, he's the GOAT, so. Yeah. Uh, but I got a cool family, eight, 18, nine, and seven. Yeah, that's um, awesome, dude. As a very new parent, Taylor, obviously, he's a, he's a dad of two, five and. Five and two. Five and two, yeah. Yeah. Um, Hearing you talk about your son being 18 and seeing absolutely everything, um, I'm more so asking, like, what is that mindset for you when you know he's reading and seeing all this stuff and he's either approaching you like, oh, I wonder how my dad's going to respond. How important it, for you is it to, like, respond in the correct way to show a lesson in those moments? Because I feel like even though he's seen it, he's probably feeling like, fuck, man, I wish it wasn't, blah, blah, blah. But then he goes in and sees the way you respond and it kind of rubs off on him like, man, he's kind of. He's responding this way. I, I probably wouldn't respond that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, at, at some point in his life, and I think as parents, the mistake we sometimes make is we try to protect our kids from everything. No, we can't protect them because it's coming no matter what. Like if you protect them till they're 18, the adversity or the, the crack that they have in their lives comes when they're 30, when they're 40. So it's about just teaching them how to respond to it. And I think for me, like if I've done one thing well, I hope that after every game I've ever coached, win or lose, when I've been, I've been coach of the year and I've been fired. Yeah. Like, be the same guy, you know, like come home after the game and don't take it out on your kids. Don't take it out on your wife. Don't, don't want to talk to me. Like, like if I say that my true per like I love football, it's my passion. My purpose in life, I think is to be a great man, a great husband, great father. So if I say that I got to live up to that and I have to live up to it in the hardest of moments. Like the day after I got fired, like, did I, you know, did I take my kids to school or did I sit home and feel sorry for myself? Like let them see what it means to truly be a man, to truly be the person you say you are in the hardest of times. And so that's, that's what I try to do. And I tried to lean into it. And I would try to have the conversations with my son because, you know, when I was at Temple, I remember we beat Penn State, we ranked, walking down the street, he was younger and, and someone was like, Coach Rule, I love you. And I'd always say to him, is that real? He'd say, wow, don't you love that? I said, no, it's not real. Is that real? It's not real. What's real to me is that my players say, you know, coach did the best he could for me. My coaches say that. And my family says that. And if I teach that to my kids, you know, I don't want my kids growing up thinking the world, you know, how the world sees them is who they really are. Who they really are is what they do when no one's watching. You know, like I got my Twitter game. I'm trying to perfect my Twitter game. It's not very good, but I'm trying right now. That's, but that's not who I am. It's just something fun that I do. Like, who am I in my darkest of moments, my toughest of moments? And then who, who are the people in your lives that show up in those moments? Um, there was, player, there was play, you know, think about this in the NFL. There were, there were players on the Panthers who, who drove to my house just to check in on me and my family. That's awesome. Like, like that's like, it's not like it didn't work out for me, but I know I had some sort of an impact, at least on somebody. Mm. It wasn't perfect. But if they see that, if my kids see that, then hopefully they live a life and your kids live a life where it's like, you know what? We're going to have adversity. How do we handle it?